Hi, I'm Jared Gardner, and today we're going to talk about important soft tissue pathology lookalikes, low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, also known as Evans tumor, and myxofibrosarcoma, comma, low-grade, or grade 1. Wait a second, those things don't actually look alike at all. And that's right, these are not really lookalikes, these are what I like to call name-alikes. They sound very similar in their names, and that's frustrating and confusing to pathologists. Uh, but they actually look quite different and are easy to tell apart based on their microscopic features and also their clinical features too. So let's talk about it. Low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma is fibrous more than myxoid in the majority of cases. So it has more of a pink uh, and less of a blue appearance. It, um, and the way I remember that is that fibro comes before the word myxo in the tumor name. In contrast, myxofibrosarcoma has more myxoid than fibrous component, and so it has more of a blue myxoid look rather than a pink fibrous look. And again, the name suggests that myxo comes before fibro. So that's the easy way to keep that in mind. The other thing is that atypia, or nuclear pleomorphism, is a rare finding in low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. These tumors look deceptively benign. They can mimic fibromatosis, or neurofibroma or other benign fibroblastic tumors because they don't usually have much nuclear atypia or mitotic activity or necrosis. In contrast, myxofibrosarcoma, atypia or nuclear pleomorphism is essentially required for making the diagnosis. You won't be able to make a diagnosis of myxofibrosarcoma unless you can find at least some pleomorphism or a nuclear atypia even in the grade one form. So this tumor usually looks worrisome for malignancy right off the bat because you'll see these big ugly cells like you can see in the background uh, down here. And finally, for immunohistochemistry, we have a nice stain called MUC4 that's relatively sensitive and specific in this context for low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. In contrast, myxofibrosarcoma does not have any specific immunohistochemical marker that it, that it routinely stained for that helps us diagnostically. Now, on a molecular level, these tumors are very different as well. Low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma has recurrent uh, balanced translocations, FUS, CREB 3L2 being the most common, and a small subset have a variant translocation, FUS, CREB 3L1. In contrast, myxofibrosarcoma is an aneuploid tumor. It has random chromosomal gains and losses. There's no specific recurrent molecular abnormality that we're able to test for to confirm the diagnosis. And this is a great tip. Translocation-associated sarcomas in general have uniform, monotonous nuclei rather than pleomorphism. And that holds true beautifully in low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. In contrast, again, myxofibrosarcoma is a pleomorphic sarcoma, and pleomorphism in sarcomas usually is a surrogate marker. It's a sign of underlying aneuploidy, random gains and uh, losses, not translocation. So most translocation sarcomas do not have pleomorphism. There are some exceptions, but in general, this is a great rule of thumb, and I have to thank one of my soft tissue pathology mentors, Mark Edgar, for teaching me this awesome tip. So there you have it. That's how to tell these tumors apart. I would recommend after watching this, now you're a pro and know how to sort them out, but if you want to learn all of the in-depth granular details about both tumors, check out the full-length feature films that are also available on my YouTube channel uh, for both entities, and I'll put the uh, link in the video description down below. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And if you like this video, uh, please click like and leave a comment below.